Well, hello there, boys and girls. Welcome back to Miss Bellina's Storytime. I am so excited that you're joining me. Guys, today we're going to be reading from the Beginner's Bible. This is devotion number 16, and the title of our story is The Burning Bush from Exodus chapter 3. Are you ready? Let's begin. Heavenly Father, Thank you so much for blessing us with this day. Lord, I ask that you open our hearts and our minds to understand all that you have for us to learn and grow from in your word today. Lord, open our hearts and help us to just receive everything that you have. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Ready, guys? Let's begin. The Burning Bush When Moses was a man, he left the palace. Pharaoh was still being mean to the Israelites. Moses tried to protect them, so Pharaoh tried to kill Moses. Moses escaped from Egypt and he went to a place called Median and he became a shepherd. A shepherd is someone who takes care of sheep. One day, while Moses was watching his sheep, he saw something strange. A bush was on fire, but it wasn't burning up. From inside the bush, God spoke. Moses, bring my people out of Egypt. Take them to a new land that I will show you. This new land is called Canaan. Moses was worried that Pharaoh would not listen. God told Moses to throw his staff on the ground. And when he did, the staff became a snake. <gasps> God told Moses to reach down and grab the snake, and it became a staff again. God said, I will use signs like this to show Pharaoh I have sent you. I'm just going to go back quickly and show you the first page when he left Pharaoh and became a shepherd. And then the next page shows when he saw the bush on fire and God spoke to him through the burning bush. Let's continue. But I cannot speak, speak very well, complained Moses. God said, do not worry. Your brother Aaron is a good speaker. I will send him with you. So Moses returned with Aaron to Egypt. When they arrived, Moses told the Israelites what God had said. And that is the end of our story. Wasn't that awesome, guys? I just loved it. Well, I have to say, I learned so much from this story today, and I hope that you have learned something too. Let's talk about it, shall we? First, would you mind sharing with me what you feel you learned today? Wow, that's great. Good job. Well, let me share what I've learned. 
In the story of the burning bush, God reveals Moses' purpose. Uh, purpose is something that we do in life. God said, Moses, bring my people out of Egypt. Take them to a new land that I will show you, the land of Canaan. That was Moses' purpose. He had a job. God gave him a job that he wanted him to do. But Moses was worried. He was worried that Pharaoh, the mean king of Egypt, would not listen to him. And this is where he's doubting himself. He's doubting that he can do what God has asked him to do. So God told Moses to throw down his staff on the ground and it became a snake. Then God told Moses, reach down and grab the snake and it became a staff. God said he would use signs like that to show Pharaoh that he sent Moses to him. God uses what's in our hands. He uses our gifts to fulfill his purpose. Now, as I reflected on this today, I realized that Moses heard from God what he was to do. That was his calling, his purpose. But he immediately doubted that he could do what he was called to do. Pharaoh's not going to listen to me. I'm not important. These are thoughts that are running through his head. God's first response was, what's in your hand, Moses? And his, Moses' response was, a staff. God said, throw it down and it became a snake. And then he said, pick it up, and it became a staff again. Well, we all have something that we can do. That's what he means by what's in your hands. There's something that all of us can do. That's right, you and me. For example, I love to read children's stories. And I love to teach from those stories. That's something that I can do. My niece is a professional dancer. She teaches people all over the country how to dance. And she teaches them to love God and use dance as a way to bring glory and honor to God. I also have a friend who is an artist and she loves to teach children how to use art to glorify God. And then my son-in-law, he is a coach, a football coach, and he teaches young football players, boys, how to be men of God and also how to play the game of football and to love God too. So it's whatever's in your hand. God places in our hands what he wants to use for ministry. And it's that thing that we have become good at. The thing that we have been able to develop or grow in over time. What has God placed in your hands that can be used to bring glory and honor to him in your life? If you don't know, that's okay. Pray about it and ask him to show you what that is. When you discover it, use it. Because like Moses' staff, it will turn out to be more powerful than you thought. It can, it can bring glory to God and touch people in ways you never would have believed. 
and he uses anything and everything. Now, how can we apply this to our lives? Well, ask God to show you your purpose in life. What are you passionate about? It can be anything, dance, sports like football and soccer and baseball. It can be singing or cooking, science or computer technology. It can even be cleaning or gardening or counseling, like talking to people or listening to people. It can be math. Maybe you're very good in math. And it can also be teaching. It can be anything. You can be a mechanic and bring glory to God as a mechanic. That's right. Or maybe an airline pilot or stewardess. You can bring glory to God in anything that you are working in or doing or learning or growing in, you can bring glory to God. You may feel like Moses, inadequate to complete or do what God has called you to do. God already knows about your fears and your shortcomings, but God chose you so you could reflect his glory to the world. Guys, it's not important to be perfect. It's just that you have to be willing to do what God has called you to do. God created you and he can work through the flaws and self-doubt to fulfill his purpose in you. And when you realize this, that is when God can work powerfully like he did with Moses. Now, even I sometimes struggle when I'm reading stories to you. Sometimes I doubt in my mind that I'm making a difference or that I'm really helping children to understand these wonderful stories. And um, sometimes I don't think that I'm reaching them or touching their hearts. But you know what? God reminds me. It's not what I do. It's, it's that I trust that he is going to touch each of your hearts. And so that helps me when I start to doubt or have fear. And I just continue and I forge through and I do the best that I can for God's glory. And he always does the rest. So guys, I have a scripture for you today. It's Psalm 56, 3. When I am afraid, I will trust in you, in God. Can you say that with me? When I am afraid, when I am afraid, I will trust in you. I will trust in you. Psalm 56, 3. Psalm 56, 3. Very good. Guys, that is a very important scripture because, like I said, sometimes we may doubt when God gives us something to do that we even have the ability to do it. And we may be even afraid to do it like Moses was. But that's okay. Remember this scripture, because at the end of it, it says, when I'm, when I'm afraid, I will trust in you. Trust in God. God will help you. Okay? All right. Good job, guys. Let's bow our heads and pray. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for your word today. Thank you, Lord, that you give us all a purpose in life. And Lord, that purpose is going to be something that, Lord, you have already given us the ability to do. 
Lord, show us what that is and help us to bring glory and honor to you. And when we have fear or doubt, Lord, help us to trust you. Father, thank you so much for your word. Thank you for all that you taught us today. We love you, Lord God. Thank you, Jesus. In your precious and holy name, amen. Amen, guys. Thank you for joining me today. I look forward to reading to you again. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel so that you'll be notified when I put up a new book. Okay, it's been good reading to you. Bye.